to the end of the road, but I can't, oh, I can't let go. I belong to you, you belong to me. Oh no, it's an. But I can't let it go. It's a natural. I belong to you. You belong to I think. I listen to boys and now when I was younger. <laughs> but it is what it was and what it do, y'all. So you're Jackie from Hey Jackie Beauty and welcome or welcome back to my channel. We are now in the actual final update of my pregnancy last year. It's so funny because people think I'm pregnant again and I'm like, nah, dog. So no, it's not happening. Nope, I am doing the update here in person, future Jackie, talking about past Jackie, because past, like, third trimester pregnant Jackie didn't know how to set the camera up right, and it was blurry and crooked, so I'll just spare you guys and just talk about it here, because I have it written down on some paper. So if you guys want to know how the last uh, 10 weeks of my pregnancy went, then keep on watching. Also, I want to make sure you guys subscribe and join the beauty club. Love to have you guys here. You know, we're just catching up, putting on all the old content, you know, just keeping it going and keeping it moving. So make sure you hit the bell button so you get notifications when I upload. And yeah, just stay up to date with the YouTube. And speaking of staying up to date, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm on all those platforms, just chatting it up and having a good old time. So yeah, come to find me over there and I'll see you guys over there. Okay. Let's get on with this update. So as uh, and I, I have that stupid voice and men song stuck in my head. End of the road, whatever it's called. I didn't listen to voice and men when I was younger. But we have come to the end of the road. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk about the last 10 weeks. So what I've written down are a lot of like medical things. So it can seem kind of daunting. Like looking over, I'm like, wow, I went through a lot. I do want to say in that point in time, like for me, the only overwhelming part was um, carrying the baby. It was a lot, but everything else, you know, with all the things that kind of came up, I was really taking them in stride. Surprisingly, like I handled them a lot better than I thought I would. Please don't feel overwhelmed by it. Um, everything worked out fine. Um, and yeah, it's, sometimes these things happen. And so let's start off from where I left off. And so it was 28 weeks and I talked about how I found out through the glucose test that I was anemic. And so I was taking liquid iron at the time. I did get sick again between weeks 20 to 32. So that was just a lot for me to handle being sick and pregnant. And I was also still working part time. I believe I stopped working when I was 34 weeks. I also signed up for baby classes through the hospital. And so I was meant to give birth at Providence Hospital in East Portland. Um, that's where my OB is, Dr. Heller. And so that was a hospital that's assigned to. And so I took the newborn and breastfeeding classes as well as the childbirth ones. Um, I did not finish all those classes. They weren't too expensive. I actually was surprised that I had to still pay for the classes, even with insurance and everything in mere Providence. And so that's something that if you don't know that already, that more than likely, whether it's through your hospital, through your midwife or through your doula, whoever, classes that you take, I'm sure there are community classes that are free, but typically you do pay for them. Um, the swelling was kicking in, so I was taking the baby aspirin. Um, and it was the kind of swelling where it just wasn't going away, like after I would put my feet up and stuff. So it was kind of staying and my doctor was keeping an eye on it because that's one of the signs of preeclampsia. Uh, I also really had really bad fatigue as soon as I entered the third trimester. So I had like maybe eight weeks during my second trimester where I felt energetic and ready to go and do everything. And then literally as soon as I hit third trimester, I was like exhausted. And so then after 32 weeks, well, I have 32 weeks and beyond. So yeah, this is when things really start picking up steam. It seems like it's forever, but really like the last trimester can go by like that. 
And so I found out I could not donate cord blood. I really wanted to donate my daughter's cord blood, but I believe it is with delayed clamping, which is um, once a baby's born, they clamp the umbilical cord. I, I believe that's what it is. Because of that, um, they don't like to donate that blood for whatever reason. And so it was that. And also too, I believe the program that I was going through, Oregon didn't have things set up or my hospital didn't, something like that. So it was a lot of hoops to jump through. And then also talking to my OB, she did not recommend for me to store it because of just experiences with her other patients that they've had with banks that store cord blood and them not really being patient with the people and, you know, getting rid of the cord blood when people either had like a late payment or a misunderstanding or things like that. She just... Uh, they she just didn't recommend it at all then i was getting back to feeling nauseated in the evenings and so i didn't want to really eat and the things i didn't want to eat um were sweets and things that i shouldn't have been eating i i really during this time at the end as i was getting achier and just my body i could feel it in my body like i was just ready to have this baby um i could just i just felt horrible and so I was a comfort eater and so I would eat to feel better but of course I wasn't eating the things that were good for me and so that was definitely not a good thing um I know people do that but I think probably for me I should have been more careful about what I was eating what else I was getting stretch marks all that and specifically I had stretch, stretch marks like up by my hips and the bottom of my belly and so I think there was a period of time where like maybe a week or two I wasn't as good with keeping up with my creams and everything and so it kind of like made it itchy and so I went back to my you know my creams and my like body bars and lotions like the lush one and that helped it didn't prevent any stretch marks and I don't ever like I don't think there's really anything to prevent them I already had them so I was like whatever um, they just helped my skin stretch more easily so it didn't itch and irritate me. The baby dropped at 34 weeks. So we'll stop it right there and I'll talk about some of the highlights from that time. Um, during that time I had my um, maternity photo shoot. My wonderful friend Chanel helped um, bring my vision to life. I'll put some inspiration pictures here of what I wanted. I just wanted a really beautiful, soft, um, studio shoot of my maternity. I wanted um, a more personal one, and so you'll see one with just me and my belly. And actually a beautiful little robe I got from ASOS. It wasn't maternity, it's like a wedding robe. It's gorgeous and I still have it. I'm gonna keep it for forever. But I just took these pictures because I just, I wanted to feel beautiful. I felt really beautiful that day taking the pictures and just, I loved it. I thought it was great. And so we did the studio ones as well as ones outside. Um, I definitely want to thank our friend Jacob. He let us use a studio and I, you know, I just, it was just great. It was wonderful. And he had so many things there that just made it easier. It was a beautiful space. Sweet guy. It was like last minute he was moving and all this stuff. It was, he was really great. And so we took those shots and everything. It came out gorgeous. I loved it. Um, I then had my baby shower not long after that, and that was in Eugene, so my mom threw me a baby shower, um, and it was wonderful. It was great. My in-laws and my sister-in-law came up and had family in Eugene and some friends from Portland show up too, and um, it was great celebrating baby girl. The food was amazing. I had friends who made Mexican food, and I just was on cloud nine, just so happy, and I enjoyed it a lot. And then um, I had a surprise baby shower a little bit later. And so this was closer to 36 weeks, I believe, a little closer to the end of my pregnancy. Um, and that was really a big deal because my friends in Portland threw me one, the ones who couldn't come to the baby shower in Eugene. Um, I loved it because I just was having a really rough time um, with everything and just not feeling the best. and. And more so not feeling the best, just feeling tired and achy and ready to have a baby. And so I just was upset and in a mood, <laughs> being emotional. And the, just the shower and it being a surprise and all the love and everything. I just, I bawled <laughs> crying. <laughs> I like came in and, just, and I kind of like knew because there were little hints, like as I was getting to the building. I didn't know beforehand, but as I was getting to the building, I knew. Um, and... Uh, 
yeah, I just, you know, I, I started crying as soon as I came in and of course dried up the tears and we played games and it was really sweet and really fun. I love my, the, I love my friends so much. All of the friends of Fela came and just supported and loved on me. My husband's work through us a little baby shower and that was so sweet. Um, a lot of people showered love on us and, you know, got us tons of gifts and presents. There's so many things we got for Baby Girl that we wouldn't have had um, had it not been, you know, for everyone's generosity and everyone's love. And also, speaking of that, towards the end of the pregnancy, too, I was doing my final DIY projects of putting together her dresser and her nursery and all those things. Now we're going to get into where things started getting very um, exciting <laughs> at the end. So... Basically, at the end of 34 weeks, starting at 35 weeks, before my OB appointment, I, um, the night before, I was sitting on the couch and just chilling, and that whole, I would say, like, previous, like, week leading up to it, and just that whole night, I was feeling a lot of pressure in my pelvic area, and just feeling achy, and couldn't really get comfortable, and just not feeling great. And I just remember sitting there and I was sitting on the edge of the couch and just being like, ugh, what? Like, what do I need to do? Where do I need to move? Like, she's really low there. Like, it's, it hurts. And then all of a sudden, it felt like something had slipped inside. Like, something slipped. <laughs> and I felt relief immediately. And I was like, oh, this feels so wonderful. Like, just, uh, I just feel good. I don't feel any more pain. She moved off my pelvis, thank goodness. Like, this is great, because that girl, she's a kicker and a roller. She has moved everywhere, and she loved being low. And so I just was feeling the pain and went away. And so that night I went to sleep, was so like, thank goodness. And then I woke up, and things felt different. Um, I just, she wasn't hitting or kicking me in the same areas that she normally was. So I was like, okay. I noticed something feels different. I'm not going to panic or anything because um, I have my appointments and also too, she was, I could still feel her move. Her movements felt different, but I could still feel her move. So I was like, okay, she's still active. And so I was like, okay, let's, let's go and find out what's going on. So I go to the doctor, have a good appointment and everything. Um, get checked and because I, I, no, I was like, okay, I'll let, I'll let you check me. I want to get checked. And I think I was like a little bitty face, not really like maybe like once in me dilated. I don't know. Not really. But my doctor felt, and she was like, that doesn't feel like the head. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> she gets the ultrasound, um, equipment and we find out that baby girl was breached. So I, I think my baby was always head down. I'm pretty sure in the ultrasounds and everything leading up to the point she was. I think she had literally flipped the night before and was breached. So I had the task of flipping my baby girl back head down. <laughs> and so thankfully my LB is amazing and knew a wonderful acupuncturist that actually helped her. Her baby wasn't breached, but helped her and helped induce her labor. And so she sent me her information, recommended me to her. The acupuncturist was really quick in getting me in and basically told me to go and do acupuncture to try and help get the baby to flip back down and also to um, do the spinning baby method which is um, basically doing a downward dog, but your legs are on the couch and your head's down. It's not fun doing that pregnant, it's horrible. And then there's another one where you're like doing the bridge pose, but your feet again are on the couch, I think. I don't know, you're just upside down a lot. And it's also having your partner speak basically to your vagina to try and get the baby to come down <laughs> and be head down, so. We did that, we did the acupuncture, and the acupuncture uses, it's basically like a little coal stick that they have, and they have it burn it by the pinky toes on your feet, because those are the points, um, I think that are either connected to like the uterus or something like that, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I don't remember all of that, but I just do remember her putting the little bits of the, of the herb on my feet, and 
burning it just to warm up those points to get the baby to be active and to move and then have my husband do it. And definitely the first time I did acupuncture, it was just like the baby was just like going nuts in my belly and I could see her just her arms and her legs and just moving and it looked like a little alien was inside of me <laughs> like in the alien movies where they burst through the stomach it looked like that she liked acupuncture so I was like okay let's get babies moving and hopefully you know she moves down and I, I love that acupuncture she was wonderful and she also did some points of trying out with my swelling um, which I appreciated too and so we went back 36 week appointments um, and at this appointment, when I got checked, baby was head down and I was so happy. Um, and I also found out that my blood pressure was, um, going up. It was elevated, I believe. So I believe it was still, it was either in the like higher 120s or low 130s. And it was between like the high 80s and the low 90s. I don't believe it was over 90. But it was it was increasing and my doctor was taking note of that um, It increased maybe like two, three or four or four like digits from what it normally was because I typically have low blood pressure. And so my doctor noticed that. And so with a combination of my blood pressure going up a few points, me still having the swelling, all of that, she had me take a 24 hour urine test. I took on this big old thing, <laughs> peed in it for 24 hours and did that in a blood draw. Um, at uh, the lab that was in the same area as the hospital and the OB clinic and everything. Um, so what I found out later, because I waited the whole week for the results and I didn't hear anyone from anyone didn't get a call, but I had an appointment next, the following week at 37 weeks. But I found out that I did have protein in my urine. Um, it was more than the bounds of the limit that they wanted it in. But I looked up later, it was not, um, it was not at the point where it's pre-eclampsia. And so it was in between those two ranges. But still, when my doctor saw that, she, she was like on me. <laughs> she was just wanted to make sure that like I was just taken care of. And so at 37 weeks, this day, this day was a full day. I think out of nowhere, my mom decided to come and visit me because she just hadn't seen me. I think after my baby shower, which was around, uh, my baby shower that was in Eugene, I was around 32 weeks or so, it was in August. She hadn't seen me since then, and this was like late uh, September. This was actually September, I would believe it was 20th or 21st. Yeah, September 20th. Um, my mom hadn't seen me, and so she was like, let me go check on my baby, see how she's doing with my grandbaby. Um, I also was finishing up the last few things with, uh, getting things ready for my baby girl. I think her dresser was done, um, that I was DIYing. Um, I had just gotten my hair put into two and twist, so that was going to be my protective style. And then I, that day I had just, um, did the, uh, checkup for her car seat. And so her car seat was in the car set, ready to go. And it was checked, so I felt good. And then, so doing all that running around that day, you know, I'm picking up my mom, doing the car seat thing. Uh, it was a lot. And then I went to my appointment after picking up my husband and we all, three of us went. And um, my blood pressure had risen a little bit more. And um, so at that appointment, I found out about the urine and my blood pressure had risen a little bit more. And then in my urine sample that day, I uh, there was protein that present in my urine. Um, it was a low amount, but it still was present. And so my doctor was not, she was not playing. And so with this, um, and this is why I say like get an OB that you trust because I did not have preeclampsia. And I want to repeat that over and over again. I did not have it. Um, because I think it's important for people to know that there's different conditions and things that you can have. And even though it's not like the big thing, it's still something that should be paid attention to and that your doctors should do something about. And so again, I did not have preeclampsia. She told me that she's like, you don't have that, but you have hypertension, gestational hypertension. And so she's like, we're not playing with that. We don't want anything bad to happen. Yeah. Sorry, I had to leave for a second. 